Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner, and today I'm excited to be joined by Kent Bassett and Marion Cunningham, the co-directors and producers of the mind-body film This Might Hurt, which focuses on the work of Dr. Howard Schubiner and a group of patients that he's working with to get better from mind-body issues. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I'll get back to you personally. I am absolutely thrilled to be here with Kent Bassett and Marion Cunningham. You guys are the directors and producers of This Might Hurt, which is the film on Howard Schubiner and the various pain patients that he worked with. Now I'm telling you as if you guys don't know. You know you're the directors and producers. But I really wanted to welcome you to Crushing Doubt. It, to me, it's so important that we bring people on who can further the discussion about mind-body issues. Obviously, your film is is potentially can play a very big role in this. So I wanted to say I've seen your film. I loved it. I thought it was great. It's so compelling. You get to see these characters get better from mind-body work. You highlight Howard Schubiner, who I think is just so such a lovely, wonderful guy. Um, but it's also very artfully done. So I wanted to, first of all, welcome you, but then also hear about how did this film come to be? And Kent, let's start with you because I know you had a pretty serious mind-body process going on. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So um, I was in college. I was 22 years old. Um, and after some like days of going tough at the gym, I started to develop a really debilitating arm pain. Um, it got diagnosed as tendonitis and I got put on opioids and it didn't get better. It got worse and worse. I had to drop out of college and I was really just mystified of what was happening to my arms. Did I have scar tissue? Did I damage them permanently? Um, and then one day I chanced upon Dr. John Sarno's book, uh, The Mind Body Prescription. And I was like, oh my God, this is what I have. Like, this is, this is the only thing that could explain such extreme pain for so long as such a young person um, and I got better right away the next day my pain went away I was able to sort of like make the pain leave my arms but then the pain moved all around my body so I started to get shoulder pain where I hadn't had pain before and I got chest pain and headaches I even got ringing in my ears at one point and according mm. to the instructions in the book I was sort of able to do some emotional journaling and recognize that this was what's going on. Luckily, he has an extensive list of all the different kinds of pain you can have that are mind-body, and I felt like my mind was going through the list and giving me each one every every few days. It's very odd. And then after a few months of that, the pain went away, and I haven't had a problem with chronic pain since then. Um, but it was such an eye-opening, mind-expanding experience that years later, after I'd gone to film school, I thought, I, I should try to make a film about this. Um, and I reached out this Dr. Sarno, and then eventually found my way to one of his protégés, um, Dr. Schubiner. And, um, and shortly after that, Marion came on board and, and we made the film together. So Marion, let's talk about how you got involved in the project, what it was like for you at first. Uh, was this all new to you when, when Kent contacted you? Okay. Tell, yeah, tell definitely. That. So um, I was introduced to Kent by a mutual friend. We went to the same um, university, Chapman University, but we didn't know each other then. Uh, but the mutual friend knew that I wanted to uh, make documentaries. Um, and Kent had just sort of started off on the journey um, and thought like it might be a good you know, coffee to have to these two filmmakers. Um, so I met Kent and uh, I, yeah, I hadn't heard of any type of uh, medicine like this. I wasn't even that familiar with chronic pain at that point in my life. Um, or maybe I was, but I just didn't totally realize it. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I was at first like, are you sure? Does this work? And then he, of course, told me the story that he just shared with you. And uh, from there, we just started making it. Um, he had already done some of the filming. So I started diving into the footage and, you know, finding out the story. At the time, we thought it would be a little bit more of an essay film. Uh, we were looking for other doctors. But once we really got to the heart of the stories that we followed, we realized that this verite uh, film was all that we really needed. And it was really powerful and could help a lot of people. That's, that's amazing. Now, Ken, I want to jump back to you for a sec because I want to know, how long did your pain symptoms last in your arm? I know then it started you know, migrating around in the symptom imperative Sarno way. But how long did you have that pain? Uh, I had it for a year. 
Okay. And how did you how did you come upon Sarno? Because I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I had eight years of back pain, <laughs> and no one told me about Sarno for I a know. I, no I one like, tells you. Yeah. And you know what? I realized um, af- I, somebody did try to tell me, but they didn't tell me the right way. Somebody was like, hey, I heard this thing on Sarno. It's probably all in your, I mean, sorry, on the Howard Stern Howard radio Stern, show. Right. It's yes. probably all in your head. They say it's all in your head. And I was like, F you. <laughs> like, that's not yeah, what's you know, going on here. <laughs> that happened to me too. A friend told me, and he it was a Howard Stern listener. So they listen to it, but they hear it in that very typical way it's it's all in your head so okay so yeah. that's interesting so who was it that told you about sarno so it was nobody told me what happened was i i, I went and saw like one of the premier arm surgeons in new york city who had invented new types of arm surgery and he said like hey listen i can't help you what you have is this diffuse pain it's through your whole you know forearm down to your fingertips there's no surgery that can help you uh, we don't know what you have. It doesn't fit into any clear diagnostic box. So good luck. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm finished with Western medicine. Like they, they have nothing for me. I was very reticent and wary of alternative medicine because I believe in evidence-based medicine and I still do. And I op- my mom had on her bookcase when I went home, I, w- I had to be taken care of by my mom because I was totally dis- debilitated by the arm pain. She had on this book, uh, Spontaneous Healing by Dr. Andrew Weil who's an Arizona-based doctor, and he has a chapter on John Sarno about a guy who had back pain and leg pain who got better from John Sarno. And I was like, leg pain, arm pain, (laughs) limb pain, maybe there's a connection. And so I, my mom actually had a John Sarno book, his first book, which I think is called Mind Over Back Pain. Mm -hmm. And I read that and I was like, I don't know. I should go look. I should at least look into it. And at Barnes and Noble, they had his book, Mind Body Prescription. So I walked. This is in 2004, back when people, bookstores existed like this. Right, I think that one still right. exists. Well, people, that's when I the outside even existed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I could go places. Yeah, right. And I read, I read the Mind Body Prescription, and he has a section. Like I feel like everybody's looking for their specific condition. I was looking for arm pain and he has a section on tennis elbow and tendonitis and in the mind body prescription and i was like thank god and you know he talks about how the body has evolved for millions of years to heal you know if you break the biggest bone in your body it will heal and then you won't have pain anymore when pain really lasts a long time like this it's usually not because of a tissue damage and that just made so much sense to me i was like yes thank you like no doctors had been talking to me like this they'd all been like oh change your diet you know, try, try physical therapy. It must be something wrong with your body. And this is the first time where I was like, yes, this, this makes sense. Well, and you're hitting on something really important that I think we find in your film also, which is it has to actually make sense, you know, and that that's, I love some of the way Howard Schumanner talks about things. They talk in a way that makes sense. And we, we get so much pushback from the world saying, no, you prove it to me or, or this, or, or this isn't true. But it was the first time in reading Sarno that it actually made sense to me. Now, um, Marion, you it sounds like you've read Sarno since, which I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah. No, no surprise there. But um, one of the things that made a lot of sense to me was the personality descriptions. Um, I think different things hit different people in a particular way. And actually, the mind-body prescription is especially useful, that particular Sarno book, for particular parts of the body and understanding that. So I I often give that one to people like that. But the personality part that I found in the divided mind just blew my mind. I was like, whoa, I've never been described so well. What was your experience of Sarno? I'm not saying you had that experience, but when you first read Sarno, did you come in with a lot of skepticism or had Kent already won you over quite a bit? Um, I think I started reading the book once I was already in the footage. And so I was seeing the healing happen like you see that in our film so i'd already you know seen it happen so i believed in it but i needed to know how it worked in order to tell the best story um so but i i think also maybe what you're asking is do i have any of those personality traits as well and yes (laughs) um i I I thought you did (laughs) and um yeah you know i've never struggled with chronic pain but i definitely through working on this film and working with Kent, 
um, realized that I have a fair amount of anxiety that I was never able to name as anxiety before, um, before diving into this work. And so I've had my own, you know, therapeutic journeys since then that have, you know, really helped me live a fuller life. Um, that's what I think is so great about this work um, and this film is it's not just for people in chronic pain. I think there's a lot to be learned um, by, by anyone about how to deal with emotions, anxiety, and the way you might not be processing things that could be really hurting you. Um, I think that's something that everyone can learn a lot from. I think it is really true that anybody who sees this movie, and I'm, I'm definitely giving a huge shout out to the movie because it is really a great film, but it's also just, it, it can be personally powerful for everybody who watches it. And I hear it clearly was for both of you. So Marion, I know you had a different experience than Kent did uh, coming at it kind of in the middle of it, but it sounded like it really did personally change you this journey. And Kent, I wondered if you could talk about how did filming this, did it change you in any way? Did you come to other realizations as you were doing this? I'm sure you did, but I'd be curious to hear what. Gosh, yeah, well, you know, the, the film took a long time to make, so I went through a lot of changes just because I lived through five years of my life, and a lot of it had to do with the process of working on the film. I would say, um, like Marion, you know, I, I recognize I have a lot of problems. I think every person has anxiety problems, sort of like the problem of being alive, but people who have <laughs> chronic pain have a specific heightened sense of anxiety. For me, it's especially whenever there's like mixed feelings, like someone I care about, or I would have like stirrings of anxiety or anger, and specifically around the footage. So like there's this amazing scene in the film where one of the people discovers a lot of anger at their dad. And oh, yes. that is like, you know, uh, like and it, when I watched that footage, it really triggered me because I also have stuff going on in my family. And it was actually hard to watch and edit that footage for me for a while. And I ended up deciding after I after I watched people in the class go through a process of recognizing their own anger and anxiety, I realized like even though I don't have pain anymore, I still have <laughs> emotional defenses, you know, stuff with anxiety that I wanted to more fully process because journaling can can get rid of the pain, but it doesn't necessarily get through some of these things that are invisible as, a, as an individual looking into your own life that I think, in my experience, a therapist was absolutely critical, multiple therapists <laughs> were critical in helping me see like, oh, I'm doing this thing. Whenever I'm angry at somebody, I hide the anger in this particular way and create this difficulty in my life I, that I don't need to do. And I would see that only by another person helping me see it. And so when I got finished filming, I came back and I immediately started doing therapy and the specific therapy that Dr. Schubiner um, suggests is helpful for chronic pain and also Sarno suggests is helpful, which is called ISTDP. Mm -hmm. And so I found a therapist in Los Angeles who specializes in that therapy. And, and that was like totally transformative for me. Um, and I later continued that therapy when I moved to New York to work on the film with Marion, I continued doing the therapy and it was a constant dialogue. I would talk about the making of the film and why I was struggling with it and sometimes avoiding working on it in therapy. And that felt like, you know, I wouldn't be able, cause we had to do this film on nights and weekends. So it was like, you know, extra credit we were going for, you know, it's like, oh, do I, can I summon the willpower to spend, you know, my Saturday and Sunday on this when it's sort of stuff that triggers me. So it was only through therapy that I was able to do that. That's, that's a really powerful window into what that experience was like. Really, for both of you, you had particularly powerful experiences, different ways of thinking about it. But that scene you brought up, I, I think her name was Kim. Um, Kim's sitting with Maureen. Um, and one of the things I love about this this film, and I don't, I don't know if you just happened upon this or if you filmed other groups and this group was the best one or whatever, but... Um, the characters capture a lot of different kinds of angles of what you want to see in the process. And so that scene with Kim was incredibly powerful for people realizing something that they've really known all along, but they've hidden from themselves. And it was, it, I highlighted that as one of the most powerful scenes. And then there's also um, Maureen. Uh, she, she has this line that I loved. She said, it's like stepping into a new person. Um, 
she had made that change by talking to her husband about that way of talking to her that was just hitting her in a way that he didn't even know was so deeply hard for her. And I, I could just see myself in all of these people. And you, you know, and I, I talked to lots of people about these, these kinds of issues. We can all see ourselves in Tony also, you know, somebody who gets that initial hope and a big change. And then he came crashing down and, you know, what happened to him, uh, as we discussed before the interview is it's his story. He's the one who knows what, what that is, but it's compelling to see all of these different types of experiences because everybody has these experiences. And one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about is how did you choose to tell the story? What were the, what were the things that factored in that you wanted to make sure to get across? Cause I know you, you're, you know, you're trying to get a message across as well as as tell it in an artful way. Yeah, I'll I'll maybe tell you a little bit about how it was made, um, and then Kent, maybe you want to follow up with what things we definitely wanted to get in. But uh, you just sort of mentioned in there that um, was this like the best class you filmed? No, <laughs> this film had no funding. This was, no. We got this so was lucky. The class. <laughs> the way that we were able to film this was that Kent had a few weeks off work. And so in between jobs, because we're both freelancers in the television industry. And so in between two gigs, he had a month that he could fly to Detroit on his own dime and start filming. So that's how we did it. Um, you know, we feel so lucky that we got such amazing, compelling stories. Uh, but that's sort of how the whole process was, you know, nights and weekends in between other jobs, because we were not funded at all. We're still really um, not funded. And so it was a struggle to to keep going for years, um, not making any money, but knowing you had these powerful stories, knowing you have the story that could really help people, um, but trying to you know get it out in the world. We were turned down from grants. We were turned down from um, studios. You know, just everywhere we looked. And I think you probably experienced this too, like you know, mainstream is not necessarily interested in this work yet. I think it's actually a little bit better now than when we started. But mm -hmm. um, so that's how we got these stories. And Kent, do you want to talk about how we kept in what we kept in? Yeah, so um, it's funny now that I'm thinking about exactly how it happened. And uh, like, we basically we wanted to we, we realized pretty early that the story was going to be structured based off three people whose stories were not too similar to each other. So they f each felt like they had a different angle on healing from chronic pain that we could show through their story. And then, you know, it was really like, well, what happens in their story that's compelling that, you know, that exemplifies the process, you know, in a compelling way. And it took us some time to figure out, you know, um, the film specifically focuses on, on on the emotional processing. We realized like pretty early that those I mean they're just it's just so compelling. You see in the film someone have an emotional breakthrough where they they now understand, oh my god, this this childhood experience is what has triggered this pain that I've had for decades that nobody has helped me recognize before. So you see that happen. So we knew, okay, this person who has that breakthrough, that's gonna be the main thing we focus on for them. But what we also know that a lot of people, that's not the main part of their healing process with the sarno schubiner model of, you know, recognizing neural pathways in the mind or, or in the brain are causing chronic pain. It's not always an emotional breakthrough. Sometimes you don't need to have an emotional breakthrough. And, um, and we also were wary of painting this as, oh, everyone has a childhood trauma that they just haven't discovered because that's right. not true and easy to dismiss for people who feel pretty sure, certain that's not the case for them. So um, in, in the story you see Mar in Maureen's case, she discovers that she has to make a change to her life. And that's one of the you know, key um, aspects of getting over chronic pain that we felt lucky like, oh, we can kind of exemplify that part of the process through her story where she kind of does the emotional processing, finds trauma and still doesn't get better actually. Um, and so then she realizes, oh my God, it's because of this situation I'm in 
that's what's driving. I won't do a spoiler alert, but you know, she she makes that change. So you know, that was important for her. And then um, you see other people. Actually, one of the we were hoping to have our, our, of our three main characters, none of them had like a really great scene where they talk about the what we call like the sort of cognitive behavioral changes that people go through, which are really critical. Um, but you see in the class, somebody talks about it. They, um, one of the people, other like there, you know, there's nine people in the class that we track for the four week program. And in that class, you hear someone saying like, I'm talking to the pain. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling the pain. You don't need to be here. This is just a sign of, you know, stress and emotions, and you can go away. And for me personally, that was a big part of what worked. And I really wanted to get that into the film because it's so simple. It's like people don't realize that they can kind of have a conversation with the pain, you know, internally and say, like, I understand you, you you are like a mental factor, you're a mental element that I can relate to and talk to and, and look for signs of learning from it within. So anyway, so that's, so we wanted to put that in there, but it's, it only fit with one of the people in the class. Um, right. Anyway, so yeah, it basically, in other words, we did sort of feel like we wanted to depict these three people's stories, but we also wanted to depict what is, what are multiple what are the multiple steps of this healing process, which has now been studied by the United States government and officially recommended by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which is amazing and was not true when we first started filming. We wanted to say, like, this is this broad treatment, you know, that is evidence based. And here are, here are many of the factors of it. I think also, um, sorry, the diagnosis phase was really important too. And that's when we spent a lot of time on each of our characters has what's called an intake scene, where Dr. Schubner spends two to three hours with his patients, mm -hmm. um, getting to know them, looking through their medical history, talking about, you know, previous stressors in their lives when their pain started. And he does this with every single one of his patients, not just the ones in the film. So um, that was really important for us to show because most people who are in chronic pain have not spent more than 15 minutes with a doctor. So the fact that Howard, Dr. Schumner is so careful to make sure a, that he is ruling in the right group of people. You know, sometimes he does have to tell someone, you need a new hip, I can't help you. But he spends that time to make sure that this is what's going on with their bodies and to make sure that they're a right fit for the program. So that was really important for us to show. Those were also really difficult scenes to edit three hours down to like three and a half minutes. Um, yeah. So they took a long time. <clears throat> well, you guys did a beautiful job m merging all these elements, but I did also want to say, this is speaking to what Kent was saying about hoping to get that that part of the, the cognitive behavioral part in. I feel like it's there everywhere in the film because you're seeing people. I know it's not explicitly stated as much, but you're seeing everybody turn it over and over and over. And I mean, even in the in the Tony scenes, you're seeing him turn it over and over, and you're hoping that it'll go differently than it ends up going in the end. But um, I think Maureen is probably the character where that happens the most, where she's and she's grappling with something that fits with what I talk about on on my my show. I think, which is doubt. She just had so much doubt. I think she even makes a comment some, somewhat along those lines. And I wondered if you guys could speak to that because, Kent, you were saying it doesn't have to be an emotion that causes the pain, and I totally, 100% agree with that. It's part of how I came to my ideas about things is I realized that emotions are part of the equation, but then we get a whole thought process going, and there's a whole fight-or-flight fear response that gets going and going and going just based on doubt. And that's why I do the work that, that I do here. I wondered if you guys, um, if you agree with that idea, it sounds like mostly you would, but did you see that in the stories that you were telling, that there was doubt in all of these people? I mean, they all come in with skepticism, understandably. I feel like you did tell that narrative. Yeah, I was just going to say um, something I really wanted to include in the film, but there wasn't space for it, is an additional detail to Maureen's story, which is that, like me, she read the, the John Sarno book, The Mind-Body Prescription. Um, and she, you know, the, in that book, there's exercises you can journal and so on. She's a writer, so I'm sure she did all the writing exercises. And then a decade later, she had debilitating arm pain that was waking her up in the middle of the night. She got 
assessed by a doctor and they said, okay, you have a pinched nerve, that's what's causing your pain. And she believed that, and which most people would. And then when she gets assessed by Dr. Schubiner, he's like, okay, so that part where you have the pinched nerve, it couldn't possibly be causing pain in this arm. This actually would cause pain in a different part of, um, uh, in your other arm. That nerve, <laughs> your, your doctor Doesn't misunderstood the right. MRI scan. And you see that scene in the film and it's just incredible. And this happens a lot. This is a very common thing for people to be mixed diagnosed in that way. And so um, anyway, but so she, she's had this experience with pain, but then she continually doubts whether it could be a mind body. A new pain is a mind body thing or a structural thing. And so many doctors are all too likely to just assume it's a structural pain without really doing a careful diagnosis. And so that happens towards the beginning of the film. And then at the end of the film, she talks about how like, you know, I've continued to have symptoms. It's not like I'm symptom free. And so this struggle of doubt is, you know, even if you feel like you've conquered doubt at some point, like I've conquered doubt, I understand it. You know, uh, two years from now, you could have a really serious pain and be right back where you were. And so having a, a clear recognition of the role of doubt in furthering symptoms or causing you to slip back into symptoms or go back to more structural ways of dealing with pain is, I think, a really critical thing and a really interesting part of your work. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and, and I, of course, I couldn't agree more. But, you know, when I was watching the film, I was watching your characters from the the the, um, the aspect of doubt. You know, Kim is a very powerful figure in terms... She has so much doubt at the beginning. But uh, Dr. Schubiner, Howard Schubiner, just asks them to just be open to it. And I I, I loved that you guys captured the whole the whole process of it. It, it's, it was just a very beautiful, moving... Uh, film in this way capturing all these different parts you guys did a fantastic job with it and i i think i watched the 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 doubt again maureen was the one that was most clearly related to doubt but when i saw tony slip back one of the thoughts i had was oh he's having a lot of doubts and it's very understandable that people do have doubts one of the reasons that I do my podcast and even do this work is I am going to stay very vigilant about my own doubts because mm -hmm. it can creep in. I can just be sitting around and start to have like pain in my arm. And then I think, am I having a heart attack or am I, you, know, you start going down these rabbit holes. We all have it. And one of the things I've come to see and my, my thinking on this keeps evolving is that anxiety and depression I'm not saying that it's entirely the case, but they, they can be mind-body manifestations also. And it just feels so important to me to get these stories out there because we have to, I, I am constantly saying this, I want to change the national dialogue. So I know you guys are in agreement about this. <laughs> I'm wondering though, if you can talk about how you think we should all be positioning ourselves in this way. Um, to do the best job to get the message out there. And I know this is what you're grappling with, but I just wondered if you could comment on that, both of you. Yeah, how how can we all help get the word out about this? Is that kind of how, how how are you how do you position yourself when you're talking to people about this to to most effectively get the message out there? Let me say it to you this way. I'll tell you how I think about it. Um, I like to add things to the picture that are different than what I'm seeing out there because I think the other stuff's already out there. So I have an attitude about this. Uh, there's a scene in, in the movie where Howard is looking over some emails he's getting and people are like calling him a quack and all sorts of things like that. And I have certainly had people say things like that to me before, but I am now so certain about this that I don't worry about it at all. I actually see it the other way around. I see it almost like I am, I'm trying to tell a whole international group of people that they don't believe in gravity and I have to teach them that gravity exists. <laughs> That's my attitude about it and I think it adds something to the picture. So I just wondered how you guys are positioning yourselves in that way because that's part of how I operate on this podcast is I'm like, I'm happy to prove it. The science and the logic is out there. I'll talk about it all the time. I'm totally there for evidence-based stuff but I don't have to prove that much because it's actually been proven. And that's, that's something that I'm trying to position myself that way. So when we started making the film, the evidence wasn't as much there. There've been a lot of studies that have come out or, you know, gotten more recognition 
since then, which is great. Um, and I think that that's been really helpful. But, you know, imagine young Marin and Kent in the, you know, sometime <laughs> between 2010 and now, um, trying to convince, you know, grant people, funders, our partners, you know, people around us, our own friends that we were making this film and it's important and we really struggled with it. Um, some of the things that I think about now, I, you know, we tackle this question every day in big ways and small, whether it's like a social media post or we're, you know, writing a press release and trying to distill all of this into a few paragraphs. It's a struggle. One of the things that I, I think is hard to say, but I think I want us to be talking about more is like, what do you have to lose? If you've tried everything, if you've tried the drugs, you've tried uh, surgery, it's still not working. Like, what do you have to lose by trying this? Because I think that that is something like, especially with Howard, he doesn't make you um, stop taking your medications unless you're ready to. He doesn't you know, he just asks you to be open and to believe and to try. And I think um, that's a really powerful message. I also think that in this moment where we're in a pandemic, people can't get to their normal mas masseuses or acupuncturists or all the things they use to help their symptoms. It's harder to do those. So we do have a moment where we don't have the access to the normal things that help them and they, part of this work is you sort of get to direct your own care, if you will, or um, uh, be your own doctor and and heal yourself in a way, because lots of folks do this, like Kent did just by reading a book or on their own. Um, so I think that there is that um, possibility right now, if we can reach those folks. Um, I think one of the also big things that stands in our way is people do hear that uh, it's all in your head, which is of course not what we're saying at all. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can tackle that question, especially because so many um, people who are in pain have heard from other doctors that it's all in their head, but then the doctors don't give them these resources. They just say that and it's like, okay, well, good luck. Um, right. So if we're able to reach those doctors who are frustrated because they don't know how to help patients, I think that is gonna be a really big step is educating doctors um, as well as patients. I think that makes a, a total sense. Kent, did you wanna add something? You, well, no I guess, pressure to do so. I, I feel like the, the I'm, I'm doing the thing, we're doing the thing right now that I think we can do. And what we're doing, just to say a little more about that, is that we are going to do for the next year um, screenings worldwide of this film. And I decided that I wanted to make the film because I thought this is really hard to believe. It's hard to believe that the mind can cause severe debilitating symptoms. Most people have not ex who haven't experienced that or think they haven't experienced that won't believe it. But if you watch a story where you literally see somebody who's been in bed rest for eight years have a dramatic turn in their symptoms from engaging in this work in a matter of a few weeks, you know, seeing is believing. And, and that's why we, I wanted to make this film. And to my, I'm still like kind of incredulous, like that's what we did. You mm. see it, you know, and yeah. the film is completed. It's available to be seen by anyone who, who wants to be, be bring all your skepticism to the film. You know, we welcome that. You know, there's many different perspectives on this, but you'll see an incredible story. What we're doing is we're, Marion and I, you know, we put all our, we're in debt. We put all our money into this film to get it completed. And now we're putting more of our own money and asking others who've seen the film and who care about this work to consider contributing to our screening campaign and showing up for our screening campaign and inviting other people who might be skeptical to come to the screenings. And at the screenings, you see the film, you see these stories, and you can also ask questions of Dr. Schubiner and or Marion and me who are going to be at each of these events. We're going to do at least one event each month um, for the rest of the year. And I feel like that's how we position ourselves as like, you know, the seeing is believing and that this film, you know, it already has transformed people's lives. For some people who saw it, we had one person write to us saying, I'm now opioid free for 72 hours because I saw your film and then I decided, oh my gosh, this is what's going on with me. And I joined a healing program Amazing. online that helped me get better. And that, that brought tears to my eyes because 
Marion and I, you know, we like killed ourselves trying to make this film on our own time for years. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then to finally have that result of someone being like, okay, you guys help me understand what's going on and get better. It was just so meaningful. And, and that's, that's how we position ourselves. And um, I want to say one other thing, which is I, I remember from your interview, Dan, that you did um, with um, Eddie Lindenstein on his podcast, you were talking about how like, it's a small but like, but vibrant community of people who know about this work. And it's really an honor to be part of it. You know, it's there's an amazing, you know, number of doctors, but also patient advocates, which I can consider me a former patients, chronic pain patients who learned about this and got better and then wanted to advocate for the work, which this film is in part an advocacy. Yeah. And, you know, and all the other doctors and therapists who, who've been doing this and building on it and expanding on the work and then getting it researched and published, you know, the, the research studies. It's really amazing to be part of it. And, and we're glad to do our part. Well, and and I want to thank you guys for doing it because I know the blood, sweat, and tears that you have put into this and, and the money and you're putting yourself on the line for this, but it must feel so gratifying to know you're saving lives. Mm-hmm. E- even even if it's one, even just one, and we know it's going to be a lot more than that, people need to see this film. Um, it's just like I feel about my podcast. I've had people reach out to me and say, you totally changed my life. And I'm like, it's amazing when you haven't even met the person, but what you're putting out there is giving them hope and and um, information that is just life-changing. So I, you know, I'm going to support you guys all the way, and I know we'll we'll be doing the same in that community. We all support each other as we're trying to build this. And I think we're becoming more powerful and we're becoming more known. And uh, one thing I wanted to say also you mentioned bring your skepticism. I say this on my, my podcast, Crushing. it's called Crushing Doubt, but it has a double meaning. <laughs> we live with crushing doubt. We live in a place where we just can't function. You are not only allowed to bring your skepticism, you must. It, it, the only way to get relief from actual doubt is to bring the full doubt there and get the yeah. answers with science and logic. But I did want to say one other thing, which is... Um, you were saying you got so lucky with that group. And um, <clears throat> there's certainly some some personalities in there that were very compelling and great. But I did want to say, I find more and more that anywhere we dip into this, we find success stories. So I think you would have done fine in any group of Dr. Mm-hmm. Dr. Schubiners. You would have found compelling stories and people who had gotten better. But I, I applaud you guys. You're giving people a lot of hope. And uh, tell us, tell us where people can find the film. Yeah, sure. So the main place to find it is thismighthurtfilm.com. That's thismighthurtfilm.com. And we we're going to continue building on the website. Already, it's sort of like a, a slew of resources. But if you want to watch the film, there's a way to buy a streaming license on there. There's also special features if you want to get more in-depth interviews with Dr. Schubiner that people can find. We also encourage people to come to a screening. Again, you can find those screenings and sign up on an Eventbrite through our website. Um, but we also have um, resources for just learning more about this, you know, list of articles, list of books for practitioners, for therapists, for doctors, upcoming trainings um, for people who, you know, want continuing medical education credit and stuff like that. So we sort of think of this website as this like growing sphere of additional information for people who want more resources. And we encourage people to check back there and, and look, look that up. I'll just say one thing too about the screenings. Um, you know, we're doing these virtually because of COVID, uh, but we're finding that people really are enjoying watching a film together. It's a collective experience. We have these little emojis on the bottom of the screen where you can, you know, tell us how you're feeling. Um, you can laugh. The film is funny. We have a few big laughs in the film, I promise. Um, and then, you know, the Q and A's, uh, you get to talk to us. Most of people want to talk to Dr. Schubner. But we understand <laughs> that. Uh, he's so brilliant. Um, so yeah, they're really fun and, uh, we hope folks will join us. Our next one is April 11th. So certainly let, let me know. I can always send it out in my newsletter information about it, but I want to thank you guys for coming on for taking the time and, and sharing your, your baby with, with me. <laughs> and uh, congratulations on it. It's it's a real achievement. 
And I think that it's going to it's gonna save a lot of lives. And so thank you so much for coming on, guys. Maybe we'll have you on again to check on how the progress is going on things. Yeah, and let's, great. let's keep in touch. All right, great. Thanks so much for Thanks, having Dan. us. Okay, Thanks, thank Dan. you. That was a blast having Kent and Marion on to talk about the process of the movie, but also to, I really wanted to give them a sense of, of, of what they had achieved because it really is, they put a lot on the line to, to get this film done and you should all watch it. It's incredibly powerful. And we know that hearing stories directly from people uh, is an incredibly powerful tool for getting better. But the nice thing about this film is you get to see the process. And, and I also want to thank um, Howard Schubiner for his generosity in that, in that movie and showing his process. Uh, he has a line in that movie where he says, you know, the risk of doing this without a licensed therapist uh, is well outweighed by the risk of not doing anything for these people. And I'm really proud to be part of a community that cares so much about the people who are suffering and is doing things about it. And Kent and Marion also had a very uh, good artistic vision and a good sense of storytelling that makes this a, a really fun and good film. And I was really happy to see the people, um, so many of the people in the film that got better. There are hundreds and thousands of people having similar experiences, whether with Howard or with me or other mind-body practitioners. We're making inroads in this, and we're also making inroads in changing the national discussion, as I so often talk about. And I'm really glad to hear it. So this was a pleasure getting to interview them. I hope to have them on again. And I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing and put your comments below. But actually, I realized before I wrap up, I, I also need to let you guys know where you can find the film. It's a www.thismighthurtfilm.com. There you can purchase the streaming rights to the movie. And, you know, it's, it's really nice to contribute to their cause as well but it is well worth seeing. They're always doing screenings. They have Q&As with Howard Schubiner, and we may have some plans to have them join me in a, a Q&A at some point. We're going to work on this because as a field, we all need to work together. So I hope you enjoyed the interview, and I look forward to continuing all of our discussions as we go forward.